It's the little. Call to order Community Services Commission for August 4th meeting. I would like to officially to call the order the Scheduled Services Commission meeting. We will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. At, at this time, we will introduce presentation items to be presented by the Deputy City Manager, Brett Channing. Thank you, Chair Shear. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, for our first item, uh, we will be introducing our new commissioner, Susie Betts. Um, as most of you are aware, uh, unfortunately, our longtime commissioner, Jim Rosenberg, passed away earlier this year. And so we uh, were, had to put out an application for a new commission seat to be filled. And we're very excited that Susie has been selected by the city council to fill in that spot for the remaining two years of that term. And so tonight we have our assistant city clerk, Jennifer Weiss. She's going to swear in uh, Commissioner Betts. Thank you, uh, Commissioner uh, Susie Betts, if you'll please stand. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, please state your name. I, Susie Betts. Do solemnly swear or affirm do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and defend that I will support or defend the Constitution of the United States the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California and the Constitution of the State of California against all enemies foreign and domestic against all enemies foreign and domestic that I will bear true faith and allegiance that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States to the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. That I will take this obligation freely. That I will take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully. And that I will well and faithfully. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Upon which I am about to enter. Upon which I am about to enter. Congratulations and congratulations on your appointment. Thank you. Now this is the time for public comments to address the commission on matters not on the agenda and within the jurisdiction of the Community Services Commission. Comments shall be limited to three minutes per speaker. If you would like to participate, make sure you filled out a speaker card as you entered uh, your seat. And if you haven't done so, please do so and hand it to the the secretary of the commission. Speaker cards, oh, excuse me. Um, Madam Commission Secretary, have we received any speaker cards? Yes, we have two public comments. Sean Fletcher, will you approach? Good day. Sean Fletcher, 19 year resident. Uh, Shortly after graduating from Saddleback Valley, I joined the Navy. I was in the Navy for six years. Uh, one of the things that makes Navy ships run well is the fact that we have a very extensive preventive maintenance schedule for every piece of equipment on the ship. My question is, is do we have such a thing for our parks? Because the amount of time I walk through the parks, and I walk through a lot of parks as part of my trash walker group, uh, I find things that have been broken, I report them, uh, and but some things like Heroes Park is a big example of that where I find like the, the soap dispensers The person actually went in there and filled it up and cleaned up But the thing was been broken for weeks 
Uh, one thing I would suggest if we do not have something like this is that we have either a person or people designated, maybe field marshals or such, that goes around weekly with a checkoff to go to each park and say, this is what we see, this is what we need to uh, take care of, and report that. Because unfortunately, I know our landscapers don't, because at Tamaris Park, the track is muddy constantly. And they even drive through the, 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 uh, the track with their vehicles, leaving marks, but nothing gets done. Uh, so that would be my thing, is I'd suggest that we have somebody or that just visits a park. If you visit maybe five or six parks a day for the, for the, six week, for the five days a week, you should be able to visit every park in the city about. Uh, another thing I want to bring up is the trash walkers. Uh, so we've had two events over the last month or so, uh, the 4th of July presentation, and then we had our na a night out. And every the next morning, we've had our trash walkers out. We got a lot of trash at, after the 4th of July. Not as much today. Uh, we definitely want to continue with this partnership with the city on when we have big events and if, communicate with us so we can uh, get people out there. We, uh, uh, I've actually been speaking with the admin at El Toro High School, Tribuco Hills High School, plus I work at Serrano in putting word out for students to get their community service hours. Um, and something else is I'd like to do is I know a couple weeks ago, or a couple months ago actually, you talked about having these pop-up events at parks where you would actually be there and talking to members of the public. And one thing I'd like to do is be able to coordinate that for where we have a trash walker event there, where we just not pick up the park, but we pick up the surrounding community. And I think that's a good thing for the city of Lake Forest. Uh, finally, when we do have a 4th of July parade, one thing that trash walkers like to do is be the last parade person. And if you really want to make it fancy, or even my daughters in Color Guard, we'll even learn how to do our pickers and do events and things like that. But I just wanted to bring that up. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next public comment will be from Bobby Amin and Diane Rosenberg. How are you? Um, my name is Bobby Amin, uh, and this is Diane Rosenberg, and we're representing uh, Lake Forest U.S. Military Support Committee, and here to introduce ourselves and uh, give you some insights into um, the adopted unit, uh, First Anglico, as well as our calendar of events that we have coming up for the, the year, and then also ask for some volunteers from the community to join us in the future um, for all the... Uh, Good deeds that are being done. So, Diane, do you want to give some more chime in? Yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm Diane Rosenberg. Um, one thing I have noticed with our new group that we have just adopted, the First Anglico, they've not been officially adopted by the city. So, I want to approach that idea with you folks to see if we can coordinate somehow to make that happen. Our former group, um, Battalion was actually stood down December 31st. So they're no longer even around. So I'd like to see if we could get that coordinated, uh, put the heads of the city council, your group, uh, the Marine Corps, try to get everybody on board with some type of a calendar date and move forward with this. So I thank you for your time. Thank you. And that concludes our public comment. <clears throat> Next on the agenda is our consent calendar, and this is the time for the commission to consider matters listed under the consent co calendar, item number two, minutes. Do any commissioners wish to discuss this item, or is there a motion to consider this item? If so, please present a motion for a second. All right. Do we have a second? <laughs> Approval of the minutes of the Community Services Commission meeting on for June 2nd, 2021. Are there any changes or additions? If not, in favor of accepting the minutes as presented? 
say aye. Do you have a vote? You want to vote online? Okay. <laughs> oh, press uh, yes or no or abstain. Motion uh, passes unanimously with Susie Betts abstaining. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Oh, and may I make a comment? Uh, can, um, Madam Secretary, can we make a note for the record that she's not abstaining because she doesn't want to vote. She was not at the last meeting, so she, you know, make sure that she's covered for that. Can we do that? Go ahead. Oh. All right. Discussion items. This is the time for discussion items. And the Deputy City Manager, Brett Channing, will introduce these items. Thank you much, very much, Commissioner Shear. Uh, our first discussion item for tonight is um, an update to the Portola Center Northeast Neighborhood Park relocation and redesign. Uh, we have from our Development, or Community Development Department, Marie Luna, who is a senior planner with the city, who will be making the presentation tonight. Just waiting for my PowerPoint presentation. There we go. Good evening, commissioners. The applicant, Baldwin and Sons, is requesting your review and comment on their proposed neighborhood park relocation and redesign. The applicant is required to provide a neighborhood park as part of their single family home project in Portola Center Northeast. Portola Center Northeast is located north of Glen Ranch Road and east of Saddleback Ranch Road. In November 2017, the City Council approved 223 single family homes and a half acre neighborhood park. To date, 93 homes have been built or are under construction. The applicant is proposing to reduce the number of homes from 223 to 215 and to relocate and redesign the neighborhood park. The neighborhood park, which has not been constructed, would be relocated from the westerly portion of the tract as depicted in brown to the, uh, the brown circle to the northeasterly portion of the tract as depicted by the green circle. The new park would increase in size to 1.8 acres, and in addition to the amenities previously pro provided, including a covered barbecue area and a top play lot, the new park would also provide a tricycle track around the play lot and a path along the entire park perimeter, a viewpoint seating area, and an informal ceremony area. In addition, the new park would continue to protect the views from homes along Malabar Road. The park will not be lighted and will sit well below homes on Malabar Road. This concludes staff's presentation. The applicant, Omar Dandashi, is here to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Comments, questions? Uh, oh, there we go. Okay. So could, could you please elaborate what an informal ceremony area is? I, I think I know, but I want to hear what you have to say. Well, I think if, um, if somebody wanted to possibly get married at the park or have a proposal or palm proposal at the park, that would be an informal ceremonial area. That's what I thought. But also something to consider, um, I know the, um, at least I know the Boy Scout side, um, they do a lot of, they call them bridging ceremonies. And if you put maybe a little bridge, they could do that. And that would be awesome for them. Just think how many Boy, Cub Scouts, Girl Scouts, all those scouts would come and enjoy that wonderful park because you'd have the little bridge for your informal ceremony area. Then they could do their bridging ceremonies. Well, I will say that the park is located in a private community. Oh, so maybe not. It is a private neighborhood park. So, 
you know, it, it primarily would be for the residents of the Oaks. And that includes Portola Center Northwest, mm -hmm. which has 81 single family homes, and the Northeast, which will have 215. I bet you'll have some scouts in there. <laughs> That's probably <laughs> At true. At least I hope so. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you for your presentation. Is this an HOA run park part of the homeowners? Yes, it is a, a homeowner association maintained park. And it, all funds for it comes out of, out of HOA? That's correct. The, and the developer will be building it. It's one of the conditions of approval dating back to 2013 when the original approval for this development was granted. And did you say this is only for the use of the people that are part of that HOA? That's correct. Okay. Because, mm -hmm. you know, the city, the parks that are not the city, you know, Tamarisk and Peachwood used to be part of HOAs. I live in a community now that Tamarisk used to be. Uh, but they, I believe before that, because I used to use that park, I've lived there like 27 years, it was allowed to be used by anybody. There was no restrictions. So is this like... I believe you said it's kind of enclosed, so nobody else would really have access. Correct. The area is gated, and one of the development requirements was for um, the developer to provide land, a five-acre park site, which the developer did, and that's Portola Community Park, which is now developed. Okay. And it's right off of Glen Ranch Road and Saddleback mm -hmm. Ranch Road. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your presentation. Anybody else? Anybody else? I have a. Oh, oh, Susie, sorry. Hi there. Um, field lights. I noticed that there's only emergency lighting on there, and yet you've tripled the size. You have barbecue areas. You have, um, I believe you called it informal ceremony area. So you have a lot of areas that would lend themselves to after dark, or some activities, but you're not supplying the lighting for that. Yeah, it will not be a night lighted park. Uh, there will be some security lighting like we would have in any neighborhood, even private backyards would have some security lighting, but it is not intended to be used at night. In fact, I don't think that the homeowners would want to encourage that um, use of the park at night. Has the, is the park also, um, has the community been fully sold then? Um, no, there's 90, well, no, there are 80 homes that are, 80 of the 81 homes have been built on the west side, and 93 of the 215 homes have been built on the east side. So we don't know if the community would or would not want that yet. As of now, the park has been presented as an unlighted park. So I would imagine if the community wants that to change in the future, they would have the option to address that with their homeowner association. And is there an option now for um, to plumb for the lighting, but then they could hold off and the community could choose to uh, install the lighting, but at least it would be wired for that, so they have that option? Um, we have not seen any of the construction drawings. Um, this is going to be going before the Planning Commission and City Council. Planning Commission in September, the City Council in uh, October. Yeah, it's just a concern. Um, communities change and grow, and they certainly have different needs. Um, and it sounds like you've got some great amenities in there, and the community might want to grow with that. And also for emergency preparedness, sometimes there's a muster point, and that seems like a really good muster point for the community if they need to use it. So there's some opportunities there to, to reconsider. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to say that the design is well thought through, quite impressive, and I think it, the park will be well received by the residents there as far as a, uh, the variety of amenities, including your shade structures, um, play lots, and all the various things you would expect in a park. Clearly, if there's interest of the homeowners as part of the HOA to do other improvements or enhancements, that's strictly, of course, up to them. But it's not unusual to have a, a park design uh, without uh, lighting. However, I do have a question on that as well because I uh, highlighted what are low lumen lights? Is that like emergency lights or some, how would you describe those? 
I would describe those as emergency lights. Um, they will need to submit a lighting plan and uh, that will be reviewed by a lighting engineer. Um, so whatever is considered light lumen will be identified on the lighting plan itself. But typically that would be emergency type lighting. I think the point of lighting is, is going to be important at some future time, particularly when you come off daylight savings time and it gets dark about 5.30 or so. And I, I do believe that the residents would want to make use of the facilities uh, at dark darkness. But again, um, I don't see anything that does not meet the expectations of a park design. And uh, I would certainly view lighting as an option if the, uh, as I mentioned, if the residents so choose to add that at a later time. But that's all my comments. Anybody else? I have a, qu I have a question. So why the change in, in going from, a, I mean, I love that you're going from a smaller size park to a larger park, but then you're losing more homes. And I'm just curious why. Um, the developer proposed the change in order to reduce the amount of grading and buttressing that would have been oh, required. Oh, okay. All right. But then he's losing money because he's not building more houses. Correct. So that it, kind of offset itself maybe? It offset the amount of grading. Okay. All right. Thank you. I was just curious. Mm -hmm. And just so that the commission knows your comments will be included in the staff report that moves forward to planning commission. So your comments about lighting will be carried forward. Thank you. Uh, we'll move forward to item number four, the recreational report for uh, June, July. Excuse me. Well, uh, that's going to be introduced by the deputy city manager. We need a motion for item number three. Oh, oh you would like to have a motion for item number three? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> We move uh, to recommend the uh, approval. Is this going to be an approval motion or are we going to do a recommendation? Uh, Marie, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the recommended action is to review and comment on and uh, make a recommendation uh, with the design as proposed to the Planning Commission. Yes, that's correct. So that's why I will take the comments made by the commission regarding lighting forward in my staff report to the Planning Commission and City Council. All right, that'll be the, the, the motion then. And is there a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? All right. Thank you. Get the vote, Get the vote if you would please. Motion passes unanimously. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Now, are we ready for item number four to be introduced by Brett Channing, Deputy City Manager? Thank you, Chair Shear. Uh, for our next item, we are going to be discussing the June and July recreation report. <clears throat> and giving that presentation will be our two recreation managers, Laura Lisak and Vicki Bluffin. Good evening, Chair Shear and fellow commissioners. I will be presenting a short video regarding the 4th of July fireworks and concert. Do we have the video? Oh, sorry. So on July 4th, the city of Lake Forest had its first concert and fireworks show that was held on July 4th on a Sunday in the sports park with an estimated of 9,000 spectators in attendance filling the sports park. There were four food trucks which provided meals and snacks throughout the event. This event was a wonderful success due to the outstanding collaboration between city staff, our public works department with PV maintenance, police services, OCFA, Brightview Landscape, and, Sal and Saddleback Church. This is the first year the city has coordinated an event with fireworks in a concert much different from our annual parade. Oh yeah, I, I was just hoping it was gonna play as I was talking. Thanks. 
I was like navigating. Yachty by Nature is, is known um, throughout Orange County. They play at several venues, not only city venues, but also large festivals, Dane Point Festival. Um, they play in other, um, like, OC Fair, things like that. But we were able to obtain them for this, for our great event. Some of the fireworks that went off, we were able to have a 27-minute fireworks show. If you missed it, you missed a lot. Sports Park's been very active the month of July. That was the tip of the iceberg, and then we moved into one of our largest and first sports tournament events for the summer since COVID. Um, we had Extreme Diamond Sports. It was our first annual Orange County Extreme Diamond Sports World Series tournament. Opening ceremonies started on Tuesday, July 13th, and we had over 120 teams, which equated to about 1,440 players taking part in games. Teams from all over the uh, country qualified by playing in a minimum of four extreme diamond sports tournaments and accumulating a minimum number of points. This tournament was a full week. We ended on Saturday, uh, July 17th. Lake Forest Little League was there to assist and provide um, concessions and uh, made a little bit of money that way. Um, but we, it was a great event. Staff was, was thrilled to have it there. Uh, we had a lot of foot traffic just people walking around the park, as well as all of our baseball players and um, local teams, along with the teams from across the country. So it was very exciting, and we will definitely bring that tournament back again. Um, you can see in the next pages, we still had our camps going. Our camp started the week of June 15th. Um, summer camps took off like wildfire. You can see our numbers there. Um, we had contract classes, I don't see, sorry, I don't see the um, summer camp numbers there, but our contract classes along with our summer camps took off uh, like wildfire, like I said, and continued throughout July. This is our last week of summer camp at the sports park, and then we will get right back into our normal programming for the fall. Um, we did some hiring of some new staff, so if, you're, if you go to the sports park, feel free to say hi to the new staff, introduce yourself because um, we you will see some new faces there but we still have our regulars ken and bill and our coordinators are still there um, but please stop by anytime if you are available this saturday we have our second concert in the park it'll be at pittsford park it will be starting from 5 30 to 8 30. we have an eagles tribute band and a credence clearwater revival band that sounds great. Get i know <laughs> And then we'll follow up uh, in September with, with our third concert, which will be uh, a country band, along with the um, 80s cover band. If you have any questions, I'd be feel, feel free to answer those. Fourth of July, uh, I know Laura, a lot of people don't know, kind of was dropped into the city of Lake Forest to take over the 4th of July parade, how many years ago? How, many, how long has it been? Uh, five. I mean, she came in and there had been somebody here for a long while, so it's a little intimidating. But she just stood back and and let us run it, because she says, um, and she was a great leader. And uh, then this year, we kind of threw something at you again, said, oh, no parade, so we have to do it. So again, another uh, hats off and kudos to you for I, you know, having to switch it up again just like you did when you kind of dropped in the middle because you came right at the beginning of the, of the organization organizing the parade yeah. and that happened so it was really fun i walked around and it was really good in that aerial view i believe was from the drone mm -hmm. it was really good yeah. and uh, a lot of people came by and uh, it was funny because all those chips we had for the vips and the vip tent People were thinking we were selling. We probably could have made a couple of dollars. Oh, I said, I'm sorry. There was one little girl I just couldn't, right. re couldn't resist. I gave her a bag of chips yeah. or something. Yeah. I couldn't resist. But people thought we were selling. Yeah. So anyway, Thanks anyway, for great job, Laura, again. Thank you for volunteering. You're welcome. So um, congratulations to staff. You guys, uh, you did an awesome job pulling that 4th of July event together. I know you had a very short window, yeah. but it was fantastic I enjoyed every minute and I was so glad I was able to be there and help a little bit you know but I, I do want to say congratulations to you guys so it was really good and then um, I wish I would have known I would have gone to this event 
um, you know, oh, that one about the baseball are big. I would have gone. I didn't know. Crazy at my calendar stuff. I'll talk about it later. <laughs> <laughs> There's your little hint. <laughs> but no, thank you again. Yeah, that was great. Any other comments? That's okay. No, that's okay. Well, we have how can I follow that? We have how another can, report. Yeah, well, I'm saying, how can I follow that? Well, right? I don't have a video to show oh, you. I have some pretty pictures in my report. So uh, the report for the area, yes. Yeah, Kelly, you have to. I'll go ahead and comment on your 4th of July event was absolutely phenomenal. And um, I very much look forward to it next year as well, as well as every resident that I've talked to who also attended. It was wonderful for the kids, for the adults. It was fantastic. And then as far as the diamond sports, um, that was a huge smashing success. Um, as far as running that snack bar for Lake Forest Little League, that was a great opportunity. And I know we're going to be able to um, do a few other upcoming tournaments as well. But the city staff that helped us and was there to get us ice and whatever we needed, um, they're just wonderful. Absolutely great. So. Um, Good, good, good. I think it will pass it along to the sports park staff as well. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so in my, over my area of the world, um, skate, for the skate park, we had our annual Go Skateboarding Day event. And actually, that's uh, Go Skateboarding Day is celebrated every year on June 21st. Uh, and that's celebrated throughout the United States and actually throughout the world. Uh, sometimes skaters take over an entire street at our park. We had about 200 skateboarders from all over California were in attendance. Um, the Etnies professional team came down and uh, did some demos for us. Um, USA and Canadian Olympic teams were there to do some demos um, and also had a lot of contests. Um, Etnies has been a, obviously a great sponsor of our park, but have in the last couple of years really come forward and give us a lot of product to give out to the to the kids that come to the park and um, also uh, that day they did donated food and uh, prizes. Um, other exciting news obviously was the opening of our facilities The clubhouse reopened in July lots of happy 50 and better uh, residents and some non residents coming to the uh, center. We're averaging about 40 or 50 a day right now between our normal clubhouse activities, uh, bingo, mahjong, uh, ping pong. Uh, so we're, st we're very happy that we're still getting a good number of seniors that are coming. Uh, more seniors coming to play ping pong with our two tables. We've moved that into a larger location, so they're very happy with that location. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to, to bring up was um, that in our special needs networking group, uh, Kevin Fernandez always does a great job of bringing new things to that special needs uh, population and he's working with an organization called Healthy Smiles that works within Orange County to offer low, um, low and cost reduced dental work to families who have uh, special needs children which is what, dental work is often a very difficult situation for them to take their kids into. So he um, is working with that group to be able to offer in the future. We we're, haven't set up a date quite yet, but I'll be able to bring their big truck here and do some things for those kids. Um, they're con he's continuing with the special needs networking group lectures, and he hosted that one lecture here on July 26th. That's a group of parents and professionals who get together uh, every couple months and have a guest lecturer come in and discuss uh, topics that are um, associated with that, um, the special needs population, um, whether it be home care, school, I mean, there's just a wide variety of topics that they discuss at those meetings. Um, you will notice that we did, in fact, put in the revenue for our contract classes and sports permits. Starting next month, in, uh, we'll be adding the revenue for our other programs that we oversee. Um, we we're kind of we're going to be a month behind because of where where the revenue comes in and how we're able to pull those particular um, dollar figures through our finance programs. But just a little heads up that I will be coming in the rec report next month. So I'm very happy to answer any questions as well. Um, hope you liked my pictures. They weren't as pretty as the video, but they still showed people having fun. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Any comments or questions? Anyway, yeah, thank you. Thank you all for oh, great reports. Welcome.
And it is kind of nice to see the revenue. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like, wow, that's, I mean, to me, that's, everything's a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> but it's nice to really see right money. So thank you for that. I, uh, I'm, I'm just thrilled that the, uh, the senior activity, excuse me, the old, the 50, what 50 is it? and better. 50 and better. I'm mm -hmm. trying to get used to that. Uh, 50 and better activities are ramping up. And I noticed the attendance uh, traditionally has always been strong on, on bingo. Mm -hmm. And that's really taken off, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's very nice. Laura, Laura will attest to this well as Brett. It's just very nice to have the facilities have people in them again. And that's kind of why we're all, we all do what we do. So five people is great. 50 people is even better. So it's always oh, just like nice that. to hear them laughing, having fun. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. And, and the part-time staff is wrapping up, as I understand, and yes. getting them Yes, part-time staff is coming back. Um, we have had a little bit of a struggle getting new part-time staff. Uh, as in, as you've heard of the news, sometimes people don't want to go to work, back oh, to work I, quite I yet. I fully appreciate that. But uh, we, are, we are bringing them back slowly but surely um, at all the facilities. The skate park staff came back pretty strong. They were all ready to come back. Mm -hmm when we reopen, but we've, we're, we, we're filling those positions slowly but surely. And it's nice to get some new faces mm -hmm. as well, so. Oh, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Right. I want to comment about uh, staffing. Uh, I met a nice gentleman at National Night Out. He is a star. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I said, oh, I'm with da, da, da. And he said, oh, I saw there's some jobs online. I think I want to apply. Oh. And he was telling me about all his years of experience working with youth and you know, teams and all this stuff. And I'm like, yes, please apply. So anyway, so if you, one of the stars, I can't, I think his first name was Michael. He's very enthusiastic. Oh, good. So okay. I told we him to look apply. for his application. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so there you go. Well, thank you. Uh, anybody else? Yeah, just one thing. Um, we're finally part, um, we had a, a family member, six year, six and a half, almost seven, who took part in both eight weeks of the uh, ballet, jazz, and tap. And she just really loved it. And um, <clears throat> it, it, they were really great. Steph was really great. And a quick story about that is I was filling out, came to fill it out in person at the, at the mm -hmm. front desk. And I can't remember the kid's name. I can't remember. And I always have, seem to have a clipboard with me. My fiance teased me with that. I have one in the trunk. I always have a clipboard. <laughs> so I was, I, I, last time I filled the form out, I kind of, I already brought it in or anything. So I get there and I, there was a, I was filling it out, filled it out, and I paid I paid them the money. And I leave and we're driving away and I look down and I go, oh my gosh, I just stole this clipboard from Mrs. Blake Morris. <laughs> so I went all the way back. And by the time I got back, the staff is so efficient. I said to this young man at the front, I said, I'm so sorry to take your clipboard. They had already had another clipboard out with another blank application. That's how efficient they are. Because you don't have to come all the way back. You could have brought it back another time. So they're really sweet about that. But... That's efficiency. They noticed the clipboard was gone. They didn't panic. They just had just another one ready to go. Went back and go so just a little, a little uh, yeah. humorous story. Oh, I like that. I usually don't steal stuff. But <laughs> <laughs> it just, I, because I'm Most such a, them watch out for you. I'm yeah. so, I'm, I should yeah. have my clipboard tonight. I usually yeah. have a clipboard yeah. all the time. Oh, I, I probably have one in my trunk right now. <laughs> all right, very good. Thank very you. Good. Uh, I think at this point we can move into commission comments. This is an opportunity for each commissioner to talk about what activities, if any, they were participating in, comments, suggestions, and related um, information sharing. Uh, I want to shake up the order a little bit purposely because I want to ask Vice Chair uh, uh, Metzl uh, to talk about the Marine Corps. I think he may have. And I, while Diane is still in the audience, so I want to start. Um, yeah, definitely uh, not, not a lot of comments, but I think everybody knows that's sitting right here. Um, and I'm sure you see, uh, Ms. Susie seems already, or Commissioner, I'm sorry, Commissioner Betts seems so, already so well informed um, that, that I'm going to call him Jim because he was a friend and a Commissioner Rosenberg worked so hard on this. And I really think we need to keep this going and keep supporting, uh, just follow Di Diane's lead and, uh, cause I know she's, She's going to work really hard on this to carry on, and I'll, I would definitely call it carry on the legacy of Jim because he, he just was, it wasn't so passionate. He just loved the Marines, and if you'd ask him, could the Marines come and do the flag salute, he was there for you. I mean, he, so I feel very strongly that, you know, 
follow Diane's lead and, and let's keep supporting it and take her recommendation to support the new group as the other one, I think, as you call the plan, stand down. They, they stand down, meaning they've kind of no longer the, the, the former one. So um, anyway, uh, we have to, we really need to keep it going because first of all, it's worthwhile and second of all, um, that is, Jim will be remembered for a lot of things, his kindness, his heart, his passion for the city, but this was his thing and I, I don't want it to kind of, as I guess MacArthur said, fade away. Let's, let's, let's keep it going. That would be my recommendation. And um, also, I believe the gentleman, was he still here about Tamaris Park? Was that you? Did you talk about the parks, Mr. Fletcher? Yeah, I think we already have something in the works. We were trying to get some kind of representative to go to each park. I live near Tamarisk and been jogging through there for many years. So I think we're, we sort of talk, have been talking about that, correct? So um, that's something. But my main comment is um, Semper Fi and let's keep this going in memory of Jim, but it's just the right thing to do. That's all I have. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to jump in here with my commission comments. Um, the, the Marine Corps military is very important to us here in the city of Lake Forest. There's a lot of history here. I myself personally, I'm an Army veteran, but I was born in a Marine Corps family at Camp Pendleton, and uh, my sister went in the Marine Corps, so we have a lot of history personally with the family. But uh, given the, the circumstances, I would hope that a priority can be assigned to this so we can begin the process um, of reestablishing our relationship with Camp Pendleton at one of the units there. And I'd like to uh, ask staff to, with all the other priorities that you currently have, to certainly make this uh, pretty close to the top of the list if we can. Uh, you might recall at the last meeting we had in June, I was uh, hoping that we would be able to do a veteran activity in celebration of Veterans Day. Uh, last year, we did a virtual activity, which went over very well. But I'm, I'm hoping staff will come up with um, ideas or recommendation of what they want to do. And since November 11th, just around the corner, uh, I, I, I know it takes planning time, and, and hopefully that will be enough time to pull something together on that. Um, is that realistic from all the other projects that you have going uh, at this time to schedule something like that? In, in terms of working with the Marine Battalion group? That and, and also the Veterans, Veterans Day, Day some, somehow we can pull off a Veterans <coughs> Day activity. Yeah, I, I think it's certainly something that we um, can discuss internally and, and figure out how to, to do something to recognize veterans on Veterans Day. Um, as we've discussed, Veterans Park, when those changes were made, we did receive a lot of input from the surrounding community that they didn't want any big events to occur there, but I think there's a way we can do something more subdued um, and a way for folks to pay their respects uh, on Veterans Day. Well, very good. Um, I spoke uh, with Bobby um, prior to this meeting and encourage him to, uh, along with Diane, to present to us uh, the Marine Corps. And I, I wanted them in their own words to convey uh, to the commission and staff uh, the importance of this activity so we can regenerate momentum uh, given the changes in the Marine Corps as far as de decommissioning a unit and finding a replacement. Uh, or, or another a unit that we can adapt w with the city of Lake Forest. Thank you. Uh, we'll move, move forward to the re rest of the commissioners for comment. Uh, Com Commissioner Betts. Thank you. Uh, as a military spouse, I certainly support the effort, so I do look forward to what's been put forth. Um, I would just like to say that I'm filling big shoes on this dais. Uh, Jim Rosenberg was the consummate public servant and role model for me. I hope I can do as good a job as him. It truly is a privilege to be a civil servant, and I want to thank my fellow commissioners for such a warm welcome. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, 
Commissioner Gould. Gould. Yes, I would like to say welcome, Commissioner Betts, Thank, and it's nice to have you on the commission, so I'm no longer the new one. <laughs> yes, and um, you know, I fully do support um, the efforts for the Marine Battalion that group that's been put forth as well, and I think that's a priority, and, and as well as the Trash Walkers and the group that you've put together, Mr. Fletcher, I think that's great for the community, and as well as corresponding that with the large events of the city, I think we need to make sure that that is also done so that we can have your group put to good use and make great use of those volunteer hours as well as um, you know the last group twirling your sticks at the end of the parade. I think that sounds fantastic and I'd love to join with my kids and, and do that because that's an important part of community service that I think we need to share. Um, I like the idea of having you, the youth involved as well and getting those community service hours because I think that's an, a very untapped um, uh, hours of volunteer service that we can tap into with the surrounding high school and you know all their younger siblings and those families so once we can get into that I think your your group uh, is already great but I think it can get much better so thank you thank you and Commissioner Sharon so first of all also welcome Commissioner Beth so excited to have you here I've had the pleasure of working well, volunteering with her at different events, and I love it. Anyway, yes, of course, I'm in, so up and supporting the Marine Battalion adoption. Count me in for whatever you need, whatever help. I'm here for you. Um, I, in years past, I've, I've had the opportunity to volunteer with the Marines, and I'm going to get emotional, sorry. Um, they, they are such a treasure because working with them, you know, you, you hear about, where they've come from, and they're lonely. They love to, you know, be in a family environment, and they are so good. They always come through to volunteer, and a lot of times, we just want them to come and enjoy the event, and they're like, no, we are here to help. We're like, stand down. <laughs> just bring your family and have fun, you know? Um, so it's always a treasure to, um, to work with them, and I know when they attend our senior dances, they are the big, the big chiefs, whatever, the big kahuna, they are, they're like, er, everybody wants their pictures taken with them. They're the big hit of the night. And and I know, yeah, oh my, and some of our lovely ladies at those dances just grab onto those Marines, <laughs> and that's that, they're not going anywhere else, they're sitting down with them and they're gonna chat and have a good time. So I, I, I just, I really support the battalion because I know what a blessing they are to our city. And um, so thank you for that. And um, I attended national, and, oh wait, let me get back to Jim. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So um, I want to thank staff for coordinating and working with Diane to, um, to do Jeff's memorial events. It was tough, but you guys did a great job. And I didn't realize, but the city of Tustin and the city of Mission Viejo also uh, at their community services meetings honored Jim and did it in his memory. I was really touched by that. That just shows you what uh, a great influence Jim was, not only in our community, but in our extended communities. And they actually, uh, they were there at the, our memorial. So that was really nice that they did that. Okay, got that, got that. Okay, National Night Out, what fun. I had to come at the end because there's too many things going on, but I really enjoyed it. Um, anyway, it was great. So, um, and then I noticed on our, on Facebook, we have a Lake Forest Flash. Is that what they call it? I, it was kind of exciting. All of a sudden I'm like scrolling through and it's like it pops up and I'm like, I know that guy. <laughs> and it was wonderful that he did like a little news report for us. And I guess this is going to be a weekly event. Um, they'll have different staff members doing the flash report. So I think that was wonderful. It was kind of refreshing to see. And, um, oh, so when I was at National Night Out, and then wherever else I go, I run into everybody from the city and community. Um, they want Bunko back so bad. They were like pleading me last night to bring back Bunko. I don't know if it's too soon to do that. It might be. Yeah, but anyway, so whenever we can, they want that top of the list, please. So just to let you know what the community wants. 
And um, I also attended the July 4th concert and fireworks, and it was fantastic. I was, I loved it. There you go. That's, everything went so well. I, I do wish they had a little better traffic control at the end because I saw people standing around that could have been directing traffic, if you know what I mean. Anyway, that's a little tra better traffic control at the end. Um, and I'm glad to see our clubhouse is open. I'm sorry, I, have, I, my, I keep wanting to get there, but by the time I'm done with work, I'm not. But I will get there. I will, but I do see them all over the place. I saw them at Costco, I saw them at the grocery store. Anyway, um, oh, and also I've really been enjoying watching the Olympics and we have an Olympian from Lake Forest. Did we know that? Did you know that? Okay, so are we gonna honor this person? Once I'll get you the info if I can find it. Yeah, we certainly can. I would love that. That would be, I think it was in, well, anyway, I'm not gonna say anything more. I'm gonna look it up. Okay, there we go. And I attended the uh, movie in the park. I think that was last week. That was so great to see families out there and the kids are having so much fun. They were having just fun running back and forth to the trash can. I mean, they were so excited to be outside in the park. And then we had, um, oh, our mascot was there. Nectar was there, so that was a good job there. And I did, as Laura suggested, I did go and I introduced myself to all the new staff. I think they know me by now. Um, so I did that. Oh. Um, I also attended the Pacific Symphony Quartet. I know we, I, meant, I sent out an email, and I have to say they were phenomenal. They did it, uh, Laguna Niguel did it in their park. So I know you're talking about the seniors, but we can make it a park event, concert in the park, if you guys want. I would, I would strongly suggest that, but it's your call. But I think it would be awesome. Because this group, this quartet comes out, they bring out their trailer, it pops into a stage, they have their own... Uh, guy that does their all their sound and their speakers and it's free to the people that want to have them there and it's a free event for our community and they did a great job they did familiar classical songs and they did some Disney and they did like a medley of Star Wars stuff and everything else. it was great absolutely great and we loved it okay so I did that and then um, so I think I've brought this up before, but in regards to the calendar, because I'll, I'll go on our website and I cannot find where, when, like, where's the concerts. Maybe I'm too early in looking for that stuff, but I can't find it. So, um, I mean, eventually I, I see it on Facebook and I go, oh, so I write it down. And then maybe I'll find it later on the website. So I still would like us to do, as we did in prior years, um, a calendar of city events that was in our packet. So here's one I found from that Carol Ortiz did back in 2016, which was wonderful because it listed stuff. So if you wanted to go, you could, if not, whatever. And I know Brett Hewitt asked, well, how does it fall into the count, into the actual, whatever, our packet? Well, okay, yeah. So I did, yeah. I found an old packet. Yeah. We'll make it and part of the, of your packet yeah. like we oh used to do. Oh my God, that would be wonderful because yeah. See, and, and this one wasn't a really long Yeah, no, it was event. part of the recreation packet and we showed you oh. what's coming up. Oh, it was part of the rest Yeah, it's my, oh. it's my fault. <laughs> okay, well, please bring it back. We'll bring it back, I promise. Oh, yay, thank you so, so yeah. much. Then you could tear it off and put it on your fridge or whatever you want to do, yeah. Yeah, no, because yeah. it was so helpful to yeah. me because as a commissioner, I do like to attend everything. I want to go see firsthand what our community, what we're doing for our community, how the community, but they always love it. I never get any complaints because, um, so anyway, I just love going to things because I just, I mean, that's it. Oh, and Mr. Fletcher, I also, I printed up your little Facebook page about asking about we're going, we're having pop-up meetings in our parks. I think we are, Brett, yes? Yeah, we are. We do have several uh, pop-up city hall events um, coordinated with council members in, oh. in parks or different parts of the, the, the city. It's not necessarily always at a park. Oh, okay. But still, that would be wonderful. And Mr. Fletcher, we do have a program that we're, we're just launching. It's called the VIP program, where um, you volunteer through the, is it building? Public Works. Public Works. And um, you get assigned a park or two and that you're kind of 
you are the ambassador for that park and you go and you check it as often as you want and then I think they're going to have a little page of, okay, was this in this shape? Or have you already heard about it? Uh, no. Oh. Oh, we'll see. Yeah, so maybe if you would coordinate with Public Works, her name is Samantha? Peggy Samantha. Oh, Peggy. Oh, I got the S part right. Didn't I? Yeah. So yeah, so I would suggest doing that because I think you'd be a perfect, all of your buddies at the Trash Walkers would be perfect candidates for that because I know I've signed up and I'm looking forward to all doing that. Oh, one more thing. Okay, so um, we had our monthly California Park and Recreation Commissioners and Board Members meeting and we're already starting to talk about the CPRS conference, and that'll be next March 8th through the 11th, this time in Sacramento. Well, oh, California Park and Rec Society Conference. There you go. Okay. And so um, we're looking forward to that. What they have recommended to our commissioner board for the state is that we do uh, uh, Tuesday all intensive workshops. So we're thinking about do we do one, two, or three? And oh, if anybody has any suggestions as, as to what you'd like our organization to present, you know, because we have we've got a few under our belts. We've gotten that we do meetings, bloody meetings, where we actually role play people coming to our meetings, not not people like you, but some people come and are not so nice and how to deal with that and how just to role play as commissioners and people coming. It's an excellent, excellent session. Um, people learn a lot and, and it ha also covers, you know, and it's just a great, so, and then we've done other things as well about how to work and play with politicians because you need to know that stuff too. So anyway, so if you guys have any suggestions for any thing that we can put together and present at the conference, I'll be happy to, to forward that on to them. Um, and like I said, they were like, hey, Sacramento Convention Center's totally redone. Can't wait to see it, but I'm sure the prices are gonna be more. So through, I believe, um, maybe the middle of October is when uh, they still have their better pricing, early bird pricing, there you go. So something to think about. I'm not even sure if I can go yet, but anyway. So that's enough for me, don't you think? So thank you, everyone. Well, thank you for all the detail you provided us. You uh, met our expectations. Uh, comment? Yes. Um, the 4th of July um, fireworks was in lieu of the parade, which we just didn't feel we would do this year. Since this was such a great hit, um, are we entertaining the idea that we can do both? Because I don't, you know, it seems like that would be a lot to do unless, you know, you know, a lot to do. You know, the parade usually is wrapped up by one and streets are clean. So I was just wondering if that's something we're going to be discussing, um, Deputy City Manager Channing. Uh, I just was wondering if it's too soon to even talk about that. Thank you for that question, Commissioner no. Mitchell. Um, I do have a, a few items for the director report, and that was one of the things I was going to mention. So um, as, as discussed, the 4th of July parade, uh, or excuse me, um, fireworks show was a, a big success, and we had a lot of really positive feedback. We um, will be recognizing those uh, that were involved in putting that together at the council meeting on August 17th. And um, I do anticipate that we will have a discussion with the city council at a future meeting. I'm thinking probably late September, or early October with regards to uh, the direction that they'd like us to move forward with for next year, whether it is the parade again or uh, a firework show um, like this, next, this last year. Um, so we'll, we'll probably present the pros and cons to both, the costs to both, staff time involved with both, and then let the council decide what they'd like to do. Um, but along those lines, I would also like to give a huge shout out to our staff and, and the great job that they did. Um, it was, even though it was only a four hour event, it was a full day uh, of work. Um, and even the days leading up to it, uh, there was a lot of early mornings and late nights getting prepared. So. Uh, they did a great job. I'm super proud of how uh, hard they all worked to get that put together in a very short period of time. And I know if we do have another um, Fourth of July fireworks show, it will be even better next year for lessons learned or the ability to make it uh, a longer event. Um, I also just wanted to 
make note that as I brought up in our last meeting, there is um, some outreach still going on with regards to Portola Park and lights at Portola Park. So uh, we have up on our website a, um, the ability for someone to fill out a survey about whether or not they would be in support of that. Um, that is gonna be up for at least another month or so. Uh, also, um, I don't sure it was mentioned during the rec report, but the community center did officially open on, in July, uh, July 6th. And um, we are still ramping up. We're getting a lot of interest from community. They're getting tours daily, pretty much. And uh, we had our very first event uh, this past weekend, it was a baby shower uh, this past Saturday. It went very well. Uh, They're really happy with um, the facility, and I think we have about two or three other um, books or events already booked. So, um, yeah, we're, we're very excited to have that open and for the community finally to be able to start enjoying that facility. And... Um, the only other thing I want to mention is currently there is uh, summer maintenance going on at, at a lot of our sports parks. Um, so if you are out in the community and you see fencing up, this is uh, our typical annual routine maintenance um, so that our parks will uh, look great for the rest of the year. So uh, those will remain up for, till, for about two, three more weeks um, until the fall season events begin. And that's it for all of my comments. Thanks. Thank you. With that, um, we're going to adjourn the meeting. Our next regular meeting is um, a date change. It's September 8th. We typically have it on the first Wednesday, but in September, the commission meeting will be scheduled September 8th at 630.